So what happens when you take a compact luxury crossover and you stuff a gigantic and powerful engine under the hood? Well, you get this, the 2019 Jaguar F-Pace SVR. Is it the F-Type sports car for the entire family? In this first drive review, we're gonna take it in the canyons and I'll let you know. There's a, actually three ways of starting an F-Pace SVR. Normal mode, just hit the brake and the start button just regular mode for the exhaust. There's also a quiet mode, which I'm not gonna do, but the loud mode, you push the start button, you push the little exhaust button on the center console, then you start it. <laughs> That's a little secret a Jaguar engineer told me. Then the only way to drive it, I think, is dynamic mode and then um, not drive but the sport mode and the transmission so let's see what we can do on some of the canyon roads that are also used for the monaco and the monte carlo rally <laughs> this is the five liter supercharged and it's a glorious Jaguar engine. <laughs> this is actually a very familiar engine. It's the five liter supercharged V8 that you know and love from other cars like the F-Type. It's also in the Range Rover Sport SVR with slightly different tunes. This particular engine is rated at 550 PS or 541 horsepower and 502 pound-feet of torque. It's made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission. Obviously, this is a high-performance all-wheel drive setup, and the engine is tucked as close to the firewall as possible for really good weight distribution. All of this power can push this SUV to really high top speeds, approaching 176 miles an hour, and you gotta have the bodywork to make it stable. You got gigantic air intakes in the front, You've got special vents around the front wheel, also behind it to reduce lift. You have functional hood vents to get all the heat out of the engine bay. So this has the proper bodywork to make it a high-speed SUV indeed. In the back, you have a unique bumper as well with gigantic openings for the quad exhaust system. And these pipes are real and they sound really good. By the way, the all-wheel drive system, it's rear biased. Basically, it's up 100% of power goes to the back, but dynamically, it can shift up to 50% forward. In the back, really wide tire, 295 cross section. And also, it has torque vectoring, but the system is using brakes, so it actually brakes an inside wheel to help the vehicle turn. <laughs> brakes, 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 brakes. So, my only thing about the F-Pace SVR is that the brake pedal is a little soft. And I don't think I'm losing my brakes. It's actually, that's the way it feels. You really have to put a lot of pressure. The steering is a little light also. But this is just, I mean, the, the way the all-wheel drive system works, the way everything works in dynamic mode, and the stiffer springs, everything else. It's just a lot of fun. Any performance SUV has got to have good tires and really good brakes. And it's the case here. Jaguar worked with Pirelli and this is a P0 that they worked on together. And this is actually a 22 inch wheel wrapped in these Pirellis. And hiding in here behind it is a 15 and a half inch diameter rotor with four piston caliper. And this is a very high performance setup to haul about 4,300 pounds of this SUV down from high speed. It's a weird balance when you're talking about performance crossovers. And Jaguar engineers talked about this too. You don't want to make it too stiff so it's undrivable every day. But you still want to make a good cornering crossover 
and it's hard to do when the gra center of gravity is a little bit higher than a sports car, obviously. There's more mass, and the adjustable shocks, I think, uh, do volumes. They really help sort of strike that compromise. I think they struck a good balance between daily driving and high performance. Um, I think cars like the Macan Turbo with the performance package is a little bit tighter and maybe more precise, more high performance, even though it has less power. Um, on the other hand, would you want to drive something that sporty every day? The interior is actually a really good place to be. The seats are very supportive, really good bolstering. I love the combination of materials and textures in here. It looks aggressive, but also luxurious. And for the price point, it's very competitive and also very sporty with a high vantage point. I like that. This is nine kilometers, <laughs> about six miles of sort of rough pavement. And it's because this is a very scenic spot, but it's also showcasing the suspension. Jaguar says the front springs are about 30% stiffer than on the regular F-Pace and the rear springs are about 10% stiffer. Unique active dampers are here. They're always adjusting. They're monitoring a bunch of sensors, yaw, pitch, throttle response, everything. And they're adjusting the stiffness of the um, shocks. And if you go from comfort mode, I'm currently in comfort, to dynamic, um, obviously the dampers become a bit stiffer. But right now I don't wanna be in dynamic mode. Comfort mode is the way to go, for example, in this section, but it's still comfortable. It's not a race car. You could still drive it every day, but bearing in mind that there's a beast lurking within. Okay, that's nice, an SVR Jaguar, but don't they also have the Range Rover Sport SVR? How does it compare? What's the deal here? Is it just a different body with the same engine? Well, not quite, it's not quite that simple because the Range Rover Sport SVR is a much more expensive vehicle. The Range Rover Sport SVR starts at around $114,000, which is $35,000 more than this. The Range Rover Sport SVR weighs more, almost, or a little bit more than 600 pounds more than this Jaguar SVR. The Range Rover Sport has more power, so they have different characters, um, different clientele, I think, because the pricing is dramatically different as well. If you want more of a driver's crossover, you have to get for the lighter weight, and you have to probably get this the F-Pace SVR. It's lighter weight, it's a little bit more driver oriented, it's a little bit more precise. The weight makes all the difference. It's not an F-Type R, it's not a sports car. You could tell it's uh, higher off the ground, you could tell it's a bit heavier. Still, the listed curb weight on this is 4,360 pounds approximately. And uh, so it's not a very heavy SUV. Okay, that's nice. The car sounds great. It looks really good, but what's the verdict? How does it stack up against competition? Well, the starting price on the SVR F-Pace is 79,990 bucks. That's very competitive because the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio starts at almost an identical price point. This Crossover also competes against the Porsche Macan Turbo, various versions of that crossover as well. And where does it stack up? I would put it in the middle of the pack. I don't think it has the edge, the ultimate performance edge of like a Porsche Macan Turbo, but as an all around crossover where you could put the rest of your family into and also have an incredible performance and sound, I think, this is very hard to beat. 
and go back to tfllcar.com for my news views and real world car reviews.